Hi everybody, it's Adam and we are coming to you from the Heart Valve Summit in Chicago, Illinois. We're answering your questions that were submitted at heartvalveblog.com. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Randy Martin, who is the past president of the American Society of Echo and a practicing cardiologist at Piedmont Heart Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. We've got a question. Adam, great to be with you. Yeah. I think you know your website's fabulous. Oh. I appreciate what you're doing for patients. Oh, thanks so much. Really thanks do. so much. Well, we've got a question from Ken, Dr. Okay. Martin, and he writes in, it's a great question, what is the most important diagnostic element to consider prior to mitral valve surgery? Ken, that's a great question that Ken asks, and um, you know, what we want people to know is, is the right diagnosis being made? So an echocardiogram, an ultrasound test, is really the way that most diagnoses of mitral valve problems are made. So you want to know, have I had the right diagnosis? What's wrong with my mitral valve? How severely is it leaking? And how does it affect both the receiving chamber in my heart and the pumping chamber, the left atrium and the left ventricle? So accuracy of that diagnostic test to tell me what the disease is and how severe it is mm -hmm. is going to be very important. Mm -hmm. And in that di in the echo itself, I imagine there's some criteria, there's some specific metrics. Can you maybe share with yeah. everybody what are those yeah. key uh, exam readings that we often see as patients, right. but we don't really under don't really understand. I think I think it's a great question, Adam. And I, I think in mitral valve disease, where you somebody says I've got mitral valve prolapse or something like that, you want to know what does the valve look like? How badly um, deformed, if you will? So how much prolapse do you have? Do I have a foil leaflet? You want to know what's the pumping action of the left ventricle? So what's the ejection fraction? You don't want that number to get below. 60%. You want to know how big is the left atrium? Is it getting enlarged? And we have indexes that people can measure. And then I think importantly, we also want to know what's the pressure on the right side of the heart because a, a leaking mitral valve, mitral regurgitation, uh, affects the pressure on the right side. So we really look at a, at a series of things. All of those in a good echo should be readily available. Got it. Now, I, I imagine, and for what I know about the website, in addition to folks with mitral valve, disease, there's also a lot of people out there with aortic sure. valve disease. And are the readings that you just referred to, the ejection, is that the, are those the same considerations? It's a, you know, it's a little bit different, and I think I think it's important. So, I mean, I, I think the bottom line with both is you want accuracy of diagnosis, and then you want to seek out the right physicians to help you figure out what to do. In the aortic, aortic disease, and we're going to talk about narrowing of the valve, aortic mm -hmm. stenosis, mitral was mitral leaking regurgitation. Narrowing of the valve can really be due to two common causes in this country, uh -huh. uh, a broad lot of rheumatic disease, but in this country it's either aging changes of a normal valve where you get calcification and thickening of the valve, or you could be born with an abnormality of the valve, which affects about 2% of people, what we call a bicuspid or congenital disease. So, mm -hmm. And it's very important which you have mm -hmm. because it influences things, but the things you want to do is that you really want to know how narrowed is that valve. So we talk about what's called the valve area, is it getting smaller and smaller? What's the gradient across the valve? How high is that gradient? Then you want to know what is the pumping action of the heart again, the ejection fraction. And then another thing that's very important is the aorta as it leaves the heart above the valve, enlarged, dilated, or does it have an aneurysm? Mm -hmm. So we look at severity of narrowing with valve area gradients, function of the heart, is it pumping well? Mm -hmm. And then how big is the ascending aorta? Is it dilated. Got it. And while I have you here, I have to ask because when you mentioned the word gradient, I understood everything else. What exactly does Excellent that Excellent point. I'm sorry. I'm speaking Dr. E's and not patient E's. Yeah. We measure the blood flow across the valve. And mm -hmm. if you think about the analogy I like to tell people is if you've got a garden hose and you uh -huh. put your hand over the end of the spigot, uh -huh. the, the water has to come out faster to get out. Uh -huh. So in aortic stenosis, the valve gets smaller and smaller, so the blood still has to get out. So the velocity of the blood increases as it goes out, we can measure that velocity and measure a pressure differential between inside the heart and outside in the aorta. The higher that pressure differential, the more severe the narrowing. Wow. Well, Dr. Martin, I want to thank you for being here at the Heart Valve Summit, being one of the moderators of the sessions going on, coordinating the efforts of the surgeons and the cardiologists, and then out of doing all that, you've got your practice and you're spending some time with us. So I just want to thank you Adam, for what you're doing. I really appreciate I think, it. Listen, as I said at the outset, I, I I think 
what you all are doing and for all you patients. This is a fabulous resource. I appreciate what you're doing. Thanks so much. Good. Keep on ticking. <laughs> Absolutely.